Do you recognize this beat? Or maybe, do you recognize this drum fill? Or maybe even this drum intro? If you said yes, if you said yes to any of those, you recognize some classic drum hooks. What's a drum hook? It's that catchy thing that as soon as you hear the drummer play, you know exactly what song it is. Today on the drum department, we're gonna talk all about drum hooks. We're gonna share some of our favorites. I'm gonna challenge these two guys, and I wanna know what your favorite drum hooks are. The drum department starts right now! Kyle, your intros are getting better and better and better, man. I, I didn't I screw up anything energy. in that one. I love the energy. And, yeah. and then there were three, everybody. Yeah, we, we had to let go of Brandon for the drone department. He just <laughs> wasn't bringing his game. He's too to busy every texting with Chad Smith. Yeah, he's got more important things to do, but uh, I'm excited about this episode. It's gonna be great. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, yeah thanks. thanks everyone for watching. Um, when I thought of, of drum hooks, I'm thinking, okay, well, is this like intros that everyone catches, mm. or is this like the fills, mm. right? So, um, yeah, it's going to be a good episode. I'm looking it, forward to it. And then I think that's where we start: is what defines. Dave loves to define stuff. What are we talking about today, Kyle? I think every episode that you're in, and you say that at least twice. What are we talking about? What are, what's, what are we talking about today, Kyle? Let's uh, do it. So yeah, drum hooks. So like like we played off the top. So what were the three that we, we covered off the top there? Dave, what was the first one? Uh, Come Together right. by the Beatles. Yeah. Um, and then you had uh In the Air to, in the Air. Um Sure. Tonight. Mm -hmm. No, it's not that one. The third Phil one, Collins. I don't know if I know you take, got it. Take the money and run? Right. Yes. You know, yeah, okay. That's that's one of those debatable ones, I think. But to me, that's a classic oh, drum. Yeah, iconic. It, 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 why is it a hook? Because it's like a guitar riff or a vocal line. It's that thing you hear, it's signature in that song, and you go. Oh, I know what song that is. As soon as you hear it, right? You hear that drum groove, and like to me, I'm like in the back of my mind, I'm like, woo, woo, right? Because totally. it's mm -hmm. like that's it. You know where you're going next, and drummers do not get well. They they literally don't get the credit for songwriting those parts. You can't copyright those darn things. Yes. But my goodness, how do you argue how important these things are? Yeah. To music. That's such a frustrating gray area Ooh. in music. Like early on drumming in bands and stuff, um, learning, oh, you're not actually technically entitled to anything. Like when yeah. you learn that for the first time, you're like, why did I choose this and, instrument? And so many drummers learn that too late. It's like, yeah. well, it's too late for me to start another instrument. I might as well just buckle down. But what is really cool um, about it is the drummers that can do that, because it's hard. G guitarists, it's so easy for them to create hooks. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. that. That's the wrong way to say yeah. it. But it, but it's easier for people to recognize melodic hooks, is what I meant to say, um, than rhythmic hooks, right? So it's really hard to have something stand out where if you can play it without any melodic instrument or any mm -hmm. other instrument behind it, you just play the drum set, a non-musician would be like, oh, I know that song. Yeah. You know? It's like the wipeout solo, you know? Do, do, mm -hmm. do, do, do. People know that. You know, my mom used to hear that. She's like, Dave, can you play this? And she'd play uh, wipeout and, because it was such a recognizable hook, you know? Oh, and yeah. some yeah. drummers have like a knack for it. Usually Absolutely. it's usually it's the drummers that are a little bit more like have that celebrity movie star quality to them. Yeah. It's like your Dave Grohl, Travis Barker, mm -hmm. Ringo, like all of them can play the drums in a way that you're just like, I know that song. You could listen probably to every drum part Ringo plays isolated and you know what song it was. Yeah. That's Im that's impossible for most bands. Mm -hmm. And that's Ooh. exactly right. And and part of being a hook it doesn't mean intro. It could be an intro, and oftentimes it is an intro. But it could also be a transition section. It could just be the groove, right? Well, you did the Phil Collins set. That's in the middle of the song. That's literally in the middle of the song. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. And one of my favorite things about this idea and drum hooks, if you will, is it is like the most easy way to pick something to go learn on the drum set. Because you hear that thing and you go, What's that? I need to learn that. And so you sit down and learn it because that's it's it just pops right up. And the other thing too is instant gratification. You learn it and you can share it with your family and friends. You know, that first time when you learned walk this way, and it's like you go, you go, hey, uh, uh. hey, come on in, I want to play something for you. And everyone's like, oh, I know that yeah. song. Because otherwise they're like, oh, play me something. You're like, oh, sure, okay. Um They're like, 
cool. Well, drummers, they create vibe, right? We create groove, we create pocket. We don't really create those, you know, well, I, we, we should be creating more of them, but mm. we're not the hook guys, right? Or the hook girls. What I was going to say is when you think hook about... Persons? Yeah, we're not those people. <laughs> when you go to the music store, you see those signs that say no stairway to heaven in the guitar section, right? right? So if you think guitars have that, okay, if you can play stairway, you've you you know you've gotten this level. Bass, I don't know, maybe like Hysteria by Muse. That's become one of those oh, like sure, yeah. the bass players. Oh, can you play that? If you go to the music store, you hear them do that. What is it for drummers? What is that one thing that probably Rosanna? That's a classic. You went to the music store. What was the? Yeah, yeah. You have more experience here. <sighs> oh, this one. And okay. I'm going to use this because it's not in today's episode. You played it earlier. It's a little harder. I don't want to hit the mic. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah uh, that would be good. That would be good one. But that's uh, that's yeah, the game separated, right? Um, of course, I'm trying to think of what else they would play a lot. Um, the Rosanna Shuffle is a good Rosanna one, Shuffle, but it's a tough one. But that's one hard to, to play. Like, like yeah. the, the, most folks don't just sit down and play that unless they're like trying to show you what they got. N now right? to. Add to the mix here. What about? I feel like the last twenty years, it's been like producers making drum hooks. Like yeah. the big one that comes to my mind, and I wish more drummers talked about it, is uh, "Shake It Off" by Taylor Swift. Sure, that's mm -hmm. like a Max Martin. Oh yeah. How about it's the group to Happy? Killer. That's totally yeah, exactly. Yeah. So not drummers, huh. but producers drum hooks. Making these drum hooks mm -hmm. for us. Yeah, that that is a great example. I don't care about that. I don't want to talk about that today. Well, we won't mm -mm. go past nineteen ninety nine and then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a There's good... There's gotta be oh, some wait, good... that's a good that question. Um, What's the latest one you have for us? Oh, no, I think we do hit the 2000s. Mm -hmm. I'm not actually sure. I, I'm just racking my brain because I don't want to give away anything. I'm right. try, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any that I can remember from 2010 onwards, maybe. Like, <sighs> are there any good drum books? And if you are there, uh, no one, let us know. I'm going to... Keep an eye on the chat. I was just going to say, we're going to include everybody in this conversation because everybody's got... A, 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 a hook or, or a fill that really identified with them, that really inspired them. And exactly, it doesn't have to be, I'm teasing that it shouldn't be, it can't be electronic. Of course it can. You know, that's the shake it off groove is so fun to play because it's not a drum set. Mm -hmm. And when you learn it, you're like, oh, that's weird. The, stick, the stick click and all oh, that. Oh, man. I, I see some, like, these are, must be diehard oh, drummers, but there's hooks, then there's just like masterpieces of drumming. Someone said, uh, Pep Minos, sorry, I did not pronounce it, uh, Seven Days Sting. Of course. That, that start to finish Seven is just like a masterpiece. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it if you were to play that one, would non-drummers be like, oh, that's seven days. Yeah. I mean, right? maybe. Here's oh, one. Umbrella, that's a good one. Here's yes. one. I don't want to give any, one. I don't want to get Kieran Stewart said smells like teen spirit. I mean, that's a, that's a big one. A huge that intro is a drum hook for sure. That's a you hook. know what? 100%. I, I debated on that, and that is definitely a hook. Definitely a hook. It's tied to a very strong riff, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Derek Stewart just had a great one that I totally didn't even think of. Song 2 by Blur. That's oh, a fantastic Totally one. a drum hook. That's uh, totally it. Jack in the Control Room. Smooth by Santana. Absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go, right? Uh, this is fun. I was dreading this. but Dr. Feelgood. You were dreading this. Like, Dr. Feelgood's a good, feel good, a good one. Uh, Dr. Feelgood? Um, How did it start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 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 yeah. Something, Something like, like that. that. It's, it's got a lot of pushes okay. to it. If only we were doing the genius of Tommy Lee coming out this Friday, everybody. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was a actually. really great plug, Dave. Thanks for doing oh, yeah. that. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, Ruo, catch pole when the levee breaks. Totally. Yeah. That's another. But Zeppelin, John Bonham had a lot of hooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, even, that's true. even rock and roll. teacher, of course. You know? Uh, again, another intro, right? Uh, when the levy breaks, of course. Man, there's some good ones. I even saw, uh, was it No Excuses from uh, Alice in Chains? Absolutely. Um, okay, let's start listening to some of these. Yeah. You said you had a bunch of... Uh, our uh, crack research team has gone ahead and compiled 10 different drum hooks right. across genres, styles, and eras. Okay. And we're going to listen to them. Uh, I imagine we all know them, but we're going to talk a little bit about them. Maybe talk about the drummers that did it and why they're so friggin' cool. And is this a... Are we just listening or is this a contest? Oh, no, don't Dave you worry. To... This is a, This is going to be the first... We're doing this in two sections. So okay. first okay. one... We're just going to do this. Second one, I'm challenging you guys with some more, maybe slightly more obscure ones to see if you guys can identify 
who did them and or what song they're in. And the winner gets to keep their job. The winner, whoever wins, gets to choose <laughs> if we give away a prize to someone on YouTube. All right. right? Pretty Sounds important. Good. Let's get us some stakes, right? Let's do it. Okay, so let's uh, let's check out. I don't even know what order these are. I don't even know what order these are in. So Jack, fire up the first one, would you? Oh. Okay. I don't, that's a thing. Good I, example. And I was gonna say, like, that could be a lot of songs, but I know instantly it's Billy Jean. Yeah, it's three beats. Not even three beats, yeah. I debated on actually pulling non-album versions of these things. Yeah. Uh, because then because that does give it away right away. That you tone do of the snare and yeah. everything, yeah. But that But does that Billie not Jean. count? I gotta say 100 percent right? yeah, yeah, Guitar that's... players are always worried about the tone to get the right lick, right? The right riff. We should be paying attention to the same thing. And if I'm not mistaken, that's Endugu. Well, we think so. Okay. There's conjecture as to whether that's Jeff Beccaro or Ndugu. I understand they both recorded it. And no one knows? No one. Uh, uh, wow. I spoke to Ndugu about it. I went to that clinic. Yeah, and he said, Bruce Widdeen himself, the engineer, was like, I'm not really sure which one we used. Oh, okay, imagine well, not let's, knowing. Let's, I also think they're doing that just to make it mystical. Someone does. Yeah, well, we're still talking about it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's it's kind of like did... Um, um, uh, uh, not P- the, Purdy. Did he play on the Beatles? That's another one. That's like, is he in any of the Beatles? Recordings? That's a whole episode. That's another episode though. We gotta do. It. Okay, <laughs> let's do the next one. That one was easy. Okay, number two. Yes. Okay, we were already talking about that today. That's that's like right of passage right there. It can totally you play is. Wipeout? Yeah, can you play yeah, Wipeout? And I don't know the drummer's name. I can't remember who did it originally. I think his name is Mel something. Uh, Safaris. Safaris, yeah. I believe he was 16 or 17 when they recorded that. What? Someone in the chat's gotta know who that is. Which what? at, at that time, at that time, that was a really hard thing to play. Like, if you consider how drumming has advanced over the past 50 years, that was technically pretty complex back then. True. Bob, Bob Batch told said, uh, did you know that Ron Wilson used to use this as a paradiddle exercise? It's a fantastic paradiddle exercise because it naturally yeah. turns around, especially <laughs> if you throw a paradiddle diddle in there. It, it kind of makes sense. It's very impressive that he was Ron 16. Wilson. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, he's 16 or 17, but it also has that like fearless element to it. Like you'd have to be a kid to be like, I'm just going to do this. Yeah. And it becomes one of the most famous drums right. of all time. And yeah. I will say there was obviously you heard the guitar in yeah. there, but you didn't need that. The first bar, do, do, oh, do, yeah. do, do, you know, you didn't yeah. need that. Yeah. That was that's it. Exactly. Yeah. And that's just it. You play that for anybody, they know what song it is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All, All right, Jack, let's go for number three. Yeah. Anybody? Um, Call Me? Yeah. Blond- Blondie? By Blondie. Yeah, yeah. there we yeah. go. Yeah. One more time. Let's hear it one more time. Oh, oh blew it. Blew it. That was the blew next one. Blew it, Jack. Okay. Oh. Well, we're already on that one. Do that one again. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, there we go. That is such a classic, you know, it's it's an intro fill to that song, but it just, as soon as you hear it, you go, oh, I know Tell it's good. Tell me, yeah. but right. do yeah. That's, Clem I, Burke. That's a good one. Who is the drummer? Clem Burke. Clem Burke. Still plays with Blondie. What? No, no way. Still has the high hair. I met Clem at a show like four or five years ago. He's actually in the bar where I was playing. And the guy's like, hey, uh, Clem's at the bar. And he just wants, to, wants to say hi. So I go over there and he's like, hey, how you doing? This is big, giant New York guy, right? Yeah. But, but he's still he's like in his 60s and he's got that that mod bouffant hair still. Yeah. Good for him. Super cool. Man, but he, I mean, not only did he play on that and all the Blondie stuff, when Blondie was on hiatus, he toured with the Eurythmics. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Super cool. S- sweet dreams and all that. Yeah. yeah. But just that opening lick. And that opening lick is fun to play. It's a little, it's, it's a little bit tricky too, because it's, you know, snare, tom, and then back and forth. And you know, with hooks, you do want to do it note for note. You want to try oh, and run Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's not like, oh, I'll just have my spin on it. Okay. Yeah, you, yeah, you gotta nail it. You gotta You're right. That's it. a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. That's an underrated one because it's like, what is it, two beats? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you forget the bar, about that. I guess. Da, 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 okay, there stuff. you go. Uh, okay, well, you now know what the next one is. First date. <laughs> yeah. I remember teaching that and the offspring, offspring tunes and basket case nonstop from like 95 or whatever it was to the early 2000s. Everyone the had to learn that. Yeah, it seemed that way, especially yeah. that opening lick. Well, I would argue that there's two amazing hooks in this song. I mean, mm. the intro and that like little section there is obviously the one that stands out. But the bridge, do 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 do. You know where it's 
Yeah. Bum, bum, chum, bum, 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 bum. You just play that without any music behind it, you know that that's first date. Well, one interesting thing here with yeah. these drum hooks, it seems to be either like pop hits, so like some sort of session legend comes up with it, or it's these drummers that at the time, like Travis Barker was kind of polarizing in the drum world when he first came out, right? Like he's Very too busy, so. he's doing this, he's doing that. Same with Dave Grohl. They both had like a knack for making drum hooks though. Every, like Blink-182, Travis Barker basically writes the hooks for it. You're right. I, I pulled this one because I think it's probably one of the more well-known universal parts of his, but you could find hooks in every one of their songs. Yeah. They're a trio, oh, and yeah. he's just as much a part of how that band sounds. We know that now. When, they, when he's not in the band, I mean, they're playing his parts. Yeah. But like, he's the stir that straws the drink, really, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Straws the drink, yes. Uh, Adair on the YouTube channel says, we sound like old ladies. <laughs> <laughs> How? Old ladies talking about drums. Oh, okay. Yeah, that works. <laughs> That's basically what this is. That's basically. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, we're just drum nerds that like drum stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I guess if, if we're being old ladies, I should offer you some cookies. Yeah. Yes. Did, would you like some cookies, Adair? Yes. Or maybe maybe some milk? Come on in, eat, come on, come on. Yes. Yes. That would be what old ladies would do. We should be playing canasta while we're doing this then, too. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, that was Five now Let's do the next one. Let's yeah. do the next one. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't need to hear that. <laughs> you know what it is. Dave's upset. There's guitar in this. Okay. You guys all know what this is, right? Okay. So I didn't use the fill because... That's a given, right? That's mm -hmm. like the like Samsonite used it. Everybody's used that in commercials. It's like so. That's also I would completely argue a very strong hook in that song. In fact, yeah. it sets up the entire mood that's in the air tonight. If you're not familiar with, that's the programmed part. So drum parts, drum yeah. loop, right? Uh, programmed on an old um, CR78, I believe, and uh, super cool. And I love the fact if you listen to it really closely. Um, it sounds like a mistake. Yeah. Because it is. Phil programmed it and got it wrong. And then it was like they played it and they went, oh, that's actually pretty moody. Kind of <laughs> like it. Because yeah. if you really sit down and pay attention to where the where it starts, it's like, right? But everyone hears it on the uh, end. With the back. Like it's one of those classic sort yeah, of yeah. rhythmic riddles until the, that guitar sets it up on one. Like, oh, whoosh. But right. you know what those programs where you like loop and you just press these lights and then it makes a pattern yeah. and it just keeps looping. The cool thing about those is that after you listen to a pattern, even though at first it's like, oh man, that's terrible. I put the back beat like a 16th note late and it just sounds bad. But then after four or five listens through, you're like, mm, this is pretty this is pretty good. This is sinking in. That's probably what happened with that. They're like, ah, it was wrong, <laughs> but it sounded great. And then just kept it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's do another one, Kyle. Let's do another one. At first, I, I'm like, does that sound a little bit like Could have been Hey Mickey. Off. Could have been, been, been Shake It Off. Could have been Shake It Off. Could have been another been hey one Mickey. too. Like, it was a little quiet, righty, maybe a bit too. Come on, feel the noise. It's yeah. not on like that. Interesting. Play it one more time and, and uh, yeah, let's hear it again. So yeah. it's a two bar phrase, and that if you don't hear two bars, you wouldn't know it's uh, it's that song. Uh, just quickly, a quick aside. You need that second bar. Bob Backold's in the chat. Bob, Bob and I are Facebook friends, so I I'm a, I feel comfortable saying this. I'm going to call him out. He said it's an 808 for the Phil Collins tune. I will bet you money it's a CR78. How much? You can How email much? me. <laughs> How much money? <laughs> and we will we will wager this together. You just got called out. Bob. Don't forget we have access to Phil Collins. Don't forget. <laughs> just having some fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. K, K Daddy or K Daddy. Yeah, that's right. Email me. A, yeah, there it is. K yeah. Daddy for all yeah. your gambling. I'll, I'll, I'll stand behind <laughs> it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, of course. So that was the the, the, uh, the footloose. footloose. You footloose, yeah. right? Yeah. Footloose. A man rife with hooks in everything he ever wrote. Yeah. That intro, and who's played it? Oh, I have. Uh, who's well, played oh, it wrong? Played, yeah, yeah, yeah. Many times. Yeah. You, I played it wrong for 25 years. Never noticed it was a four-bar pattern. Do you have your hi-hats oh, going when you Oh, but Dave just said it's a two-bar pattern. Now no, it's a four-bar four. pattern. Oh. Okay. You know what? You're right. It's a four-bar pattern. The second bar is what you need. Oh. oh, there you go. Oh, 
so then I've been playing it wrong. This is valuable education if you're watching. <laughs> you will have to play this song at some point in your career. Regardless if you are playing the Kenny Loggins version or the Blake Shelton version. That's right. Both yeah. basically have the same drum part. This is a, gotcha. that's, a, that's a great song to have in your opera. But yeah, yeah. you can tell right away. Yeah, and of course, I just see Kevin Bacon. Now so. all I'm going to see is you. Yeah. <laughs> There's a gift for everybody out there. A gift, yeah. All right, next one. Masterpiece. Mm. What a masterpiece indeed. I think Holy cow. It, it's criminal that that doesn't deserve royalties technically. Oh, it's yeah. criminal. He's That's probably given technically a two bucks. people in that too, though. The tambourine. The tambourine thing. is no yeah. Let's make that. That's clear. why it's so hard to replicate live on your own. Yeah. So that that drives it. The offbeat right. tambourine. So what, okay, yeah. Before what is it? Fifty ways to leave. You. By yeah. Paul, Paul Simon. Simon. Recorded by Steve, Steve Gad. Right. Gad. One thing I noticed with this, because a lot of drummers, this is another one of those rite of passage grooves. Is if you listen closely, listen to. Let's play it again. Yeah, exactly. Mm. He is playing that so mm. quietly. Yeah. And delicately. Mm -hmm. And everyone that plays it tries like. And it's like, no, it's like, it's so true. Yeah, you should hear me play it. It's, <laughs> it's at a level 10. It's, yeah, yeah. Volume. Yes. <laughs> Volume. No, nine. bass pedal doesn't help. <laughs> Dynamics, I'm playing as loud as I can. The engineer can turn the hi hats. Maybe down. you could play the tambourine part with, with your double kicker. Yeah. But yeah, for an, anyone watching that doesn't realize, you have the cool Steve Gadd hi hat open part, but then there's this tambourine that quietly drives the whole, it's mm -hmm. like they did the beat and they're like, ah, it's missing something. And then they added this little tambourine on the off beats. Yep. Right. But that's such a classic. And the story goes that he was just warming up. Steve Gadd, of course, uh, inserted rudimental drumming in everything he did. That's kind of one of the big sort of hallmarks of his sound. And he was warming up in the studio one day and Paul Simon being the smart man that he is goes, what's that? It was oh, just a thing I'm playing. He's like, we're gonna use that right now. Cause hmm. that song, uh, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, when it gets into the chorus, it just goes to a straight kind of pocket thing. Yeah. And then it comes, so it's like they're total non sequiturs. Yeah. But it creates this really interesting space for the vocal to work. You could have played a million different things there, but because they went that road, it's like, holy cow, this is such a crazy juxtaposition. Never be afraid to try something like that. Because you think, that's... You think they're in the studio, like lunch arrived, and like, dude, hurry up, man, lunch is here. So there's like, let's just do the chorus, and I'll just do four in the floor. I, Something like that. Lunch arrived. <laughs> okay, let's do just the next say, song. Just We're going saying, down the road. Just saying it was here, New God. York in the 70s. Let's That's just, all I'm saying. Next song. But, but one, one last thing. You're <laughs> right to acknowledge Paul Simon to recognize that that's a hook. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's a su superpower. That is a superpower. All right. Do we have more? Jack's looking like a <laughs> Don't know it. You keep a knocking, little Richard. No. Oh! No, yeah. come on, Johnny B. Good. Kidding. Isn't it Johnny B. I think it's Eddie Cochran. <laughs> Eddie Cochran? I think it's Keep It Knocking is Eddie Cochran. I think. Oh, really? I think. I'm not I totally sure. Little well, Richard did it for sure. Yeah. Well, we just talked about this one before. Of course. Rock and roll. Led Zeppelin. John Bonham. John Bonham, yeah. yeah. What a what a hook. Yeah. And it's like, I remember doing a I, I remember doing a um that beat got me onto that de-stupefying thing because he has oh, sure. his rock in his left hand that entire time. That that song probably taught me more with my left hand independence than any other mm, song. That's, you know what? And that's probably the most overlooked thing. I know we're not talking about that part of the song, but I have to say that's the most overlooked part of that song. Drummers never play it that way. Oh, I've seen so many that just leave just, their left hand they, only for the back beat. Just, yeah. like, and, what are you doing? And you really, if you really sit down and look, I mean, aside from all the other brilliant things Bonham did, the man swung so mm. hard in everything he played. And like that, like if you, if you, because we now kind of, over time we figured out what that intro is, exactly like you said. Uh, uh, it's a, is it called Keep a Knockin'? Yeah. Very knock, keep a knockin'? I knew it was a little, little Richard. And but, it's, it's yeah. basically aping a guitar lick on the drums. But if you think about the song's energy and the feel of that song, it's them taking that style of music and amping it up. 
right? So Bonham really paid attention to that and really paid homage because, you know, a lot of those old 50s rock drummers, they were jazz drummers who would just kind of figure out how to play. They didn't know how to play backbeats. Yeah. So they kind of figured out how to. <laughs> just did it. So, you know, having the double-handed part, it's basically taking a shuffle, like a Texas shuffle, and straightening it out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he's really respecting that. He's not just going right through it. The intro, the song, the whole thing needs to get the respect it deserves for being like, he really did his homework. Yeah. It's like yeah. And if, if you're watching, go blow your mind. Sorry, I'm excited about it. <clears throat> this is awesome. Go blow your mind and listen to Keep It Knocking by Little Richard or you said Eddie Cochran. I think it's Eddie Cochran. I swear it's Little Richard. But I know. I think you, you both probably You'll hear the it. drum intro and you'll be like, oh, the first time I drew the comparison, it was like, oh my God, yeah. he lifted it from someone else. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's so cool. It, well, I think, you know, and that's the great thing now. We have all this access to these artists who are able and willing to talk about their records, and they'll all tell you uh, what they borrowed or stole. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a great songwriter in Vancouver. His name's Jim Valance. Fantastic drummer, by the way. Also great at writing drum hooks. Um, you know, wrote tons of huge hits with Brian Adams and all these great artists. His website about songwriting, he actually breaks down all the songs and tells you exactly what he ripped off. Really? Yep. He says, oh yeah, this song, huge Star Wars influence. And here's what I took. No <laughs> way. Cool. For, you know, for any like serious drum nerds, it's so fun to trace back the lineage of your favorite songs and yeah, parts. Yeah. <sighs> totally. Yeah. All right, exactly. Kyle, is there, is now that's there... la that was the last one, yes, Jack? Oh, I could have kept going. Two more? One more. Okay, one more. One more. Let's do it. Let's Here do we it. go. You know this one. Rock with you, Michael Jackson. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's is that John idea. JR? It is. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, that's JR yeah. Robinson. Boom. That's disgusting. It's so good. It is disgusting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I believe Quincy asked him to just come up with an intro for the song. And he, you know, that's clearly what he came up with. But it's like, he was pretty good at coming up with drum intros just on the spot. He's a pretty confident drummer in the way he approached things. I think that's why he got those gigs. Obviously, incredible sense of time and feel, but really confident. And I think that's why those guys like Quincy and Michael Jackson trusted him to do that stuff. Because here's a controversial hot take. Oh, okay. Bernard Purdy played it. I mean, you, you, he, yeah. So do you think some of these hooks are only, they hit that stratosphere because of the song that they're behind? Sure. Like, you know, you didn't, if you didn't hear that song as much as you did on the radio and you didn't hear it from, you know, the world's biggest pop artist, would it still be something where, like, oh, that's a cool drum hook? That's a cool drum part. Would Sorry. the song have been as big without the drum hook? That's the, that's, that's the question, right? It's because I can see that being the case in some of them. 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover is one of those ones where I don't think the song would have done as well unless he had Steve Gadd's hook sure. it, right? Um, but then you get a song like, 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 we just listened to it, John yeah. J. Robinson. It, did that make the song? If that was in another song, would it have been like, man, what a great hook? Or is it because of the song? We we wouldn't be talking about Billie Jean. It's the most simple. There, there's, well, there's, yeah, and there, that's the song where you're, you're right. You wouldn't so, talk about Billie Jean because it's, it's literally the simplest thing you can play on a drum set. Yeah, if you, <laughs> if you throw a song out 20 billion times around the world over the course of that, of course people are going to be like, that's a, you know, they recognize that hook, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, great one from uh, Tracy Duncan. Brick House. Brick House is one that I uh, oh. almost grabbed for this. Oh. I could have picked a million, right? Yeah, you so, could have. You could have. That was on my list. I just I love that opening drum fill because it's like a whole bar of just like, just rolling across the toms. Well, I'm glad you chose some unique, different ones. Like we've done. Drummy has a video. I remember. 50 greatest drum hooks mm -hmm. or no intro sorry mm -hmm. drum intros we had like sunday bloody sunday on there um but there's some there's a ton out there that we could have chose from right oh and i shouldn't say much because we still got more we're i was gonna, gonna say text. okay okay you've now beautifully dovetailed this into our next section where we're going to challenge the two of you guys all right so we've got seven more okay okay i'm hoping with that odd number we're going to see uh, a victor here. So basically, uh, you guys have drumsticks. You uh, you've got a woodblock. You've got a cowbell. Oh, okay. This was on so purpose? this is like your 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 buzzer. Okay. I have a woodblock so, over here. Yeah, yeah, right there. And it's it plastic. To, if you want to get down to it. Has to be traditional grip when you. Oh, okay. There you buzz. go. Oh, okay, I'm good. Uh, so what you're gonna do is now we're gonna we've got seven more queued up here, <laughs> and whoever chimes in first has to answer. What if um, we get it wrong? Well, then it goes to the next person. All right. Obviously. All right. And uh, if you win, uh, whoever wins gets to pick uh, what prize and who we give it to uh, in YouTube. This is like, all right, you know, just a fun thing. So, uh, Jack, if you, when you're ready there, now some of these may be a little more obscure, so keep that in you mind. You got to go, Chad? Are we Before, sticking with this? Yeah, we're going to go, Chad. Jack, if you would queue up the first one, please. Oh, jeez. I know more time. this, I know this, I know this. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know this I know one. it, I know it, I know it. Uh, no, no, you don't have to play it again, I got it. Don't give Dave an advantage. I'll give you, uh, I'm gonna give you a countdown on this. It's, uh, Five. Four. I don't know this one. Three. I Drummer was, coming out soon to Drumio. <laughs> two. Okay, oh. it's Billy Joel. Yes. And it's, what's the matter with the... Yes. Da, 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 oh my goodness. Very good. What's the oh. name of it though? <laughs> I'm gonna get Help hate. me out in the chat here. <laughs> I'm gonna get hate. I'm sure uh, <laughs> members area will grab <laughs> that. Oh yeah, we got <laughs> members area, they got it. <laughs> it's still... Still rock, still rock and, roll and roll There you go. There we uh, that's a provisional yes. <sighs> you knew what song it was. Half a point. Yeah, now that Half was really hard. That's, I'm exhausted. That's, that's one little fill in the middle song. Why is that a hook? Because it's a straight fill in a, in a swung song. Super muted drums. <laughs> oh, that's why it's totally so cool. And it's totally over the top yeah, for that yeah, song. Yeah, There's like no yeah. crack symbols in that song either. It's like super... Uh, all right, so ready. a provisional one for uh, all right, all right. our man over here. Uh, next one, please. That's you two. Um, um, do it's the come on, it's the um, uh, do this, that doom, das, that doom, 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 it's on the war album. Come on, you're right. It's um, oh. give me bullet the blue sky, bullet the blue sky, bullet the blue sky. Okay, tied. That, that was have tough. that one. Okay. I haven't heard that song in a long time. Tied one one. All right, That's next Larry one, Jack Mullen Jr. at his finest. Oh, oh, I covered this one. <laughs> yeah, I taught this one on a, a lesson. A drummer we just spoke about? Yeah, I know that. Yeah, you do? Uh, play one more time. No, what's the song again? <clears throat> oh, it's Ricky Lee Jones. Yes. And the song's called... You're looking at Chucky the chat. Love. Yes, yeah. you're looking at the chat. He, he, he is not. I can see his screen. Yeah. Thanks, Burnaby89, for giving is. him the answer, by the way. Two, two to one. Two to one. <sighs> Burnaby Both 80. provisional yeses from, 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 the, from oh, the judges, yeah, though. This is, this is intense. All right. All right, number three. No, four. Pardon me. Here we go. Oh, I got it. Dave got it. That's, um... Take five. Ah, there we go. Take five. Drummer. Drummer. And it's um oh come on. It's uh what's his name on drums? Um it's my life mission to get him recognized more often. Good. Oh really? Yeah. What's his name? Joe I, Morello. I, Joe Morello. If, of course. if you listen to his stuff, John Bonham stole so much from him. And no yeah. one ever talks about Joe Morello. Go listen we to are Joe tied. Morello. Tied. I'm shocked by this. This is good. This is good. All right. Okay, next one. I don't know. I knew one. it. I was going to put one, and I'm like, I don't think they're going to get this. I don't, one. I don't huh? get this. Todd Superman don't, 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 don't. is screaming I know, at his computer I know. right now. <laughs> I'm going to get a message from him as soon as this one's over. He's going to be screaming. Let's let the chat figure I'm it out. I'm looking to see if anyone's got it. Oh, the chat, both chats, someone's got to figure out what yeah. this is. I left the guitar part in to see if that would help. It didn't help. Is this XTC? Maybe. Okay, so lep, lep, Lead Poison's an XTC. Okay, that's correct. Okay. I need to know what song it is. Yeah, we need to know the song. Okay, if the chat's even having trouble, then I don't feel as bad. <laughs> uh, I don't feel as bad. All right, so we're going to have to pass on is that one. Is this a deep cut? No. Well, I mean, it's XTC. Making plans for Nigel. That's correct. There oh, you go. The first person yes. to get that in. Well YouTube done. Well was done, Nicholas chat. Vine. Good job. Nicholas Vine? Yeah. Nicholas Vine, you just won a prize. Email me at krad at drumeo.com. You deserve a prize for that. So email me. Uh, you're going to get a surprise prize for me. Uh, email me with your address. We'll send you something. A surprise prize. Yeah, because I don't know what's going to be yet. So. <laughs> AKA a surprise. Right. Surprise. Sur so like surprise. <laughs> so we got still tied. That was a pass on that one. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Next one. <laughs> Wait, there's more? Um, who, the drummer on that one, was that Matt Cameron? Yep. And the song is uh, Spoon Man. Yes. Yeah. There we Three go. Three to two. Boom. Dylan. That's the best part buddy. of the song, by the way. They let that go. I could have listened to another four bars of that part. Yes. They just, oh, it's just so good. Okay. So, here's the thing. We have one more. What? You can only tie at this point. I know. So, keep that in just mind. Oh, jeez. Can't up. lose to Dave. All right. Not like this. Last one. Not like this. That is uh, Higher Love by Steve Winwood. Woo! 
Yep. Hey, good game, man. Good game. This is so cool. Another thing that a guy was playing for a warm up, and uh, really? Steve Winwood's like, I don't even know if it was Steve Winwood that said it, it might have been the producers. Like, that. Let's use that. We talked about this song the other day. Yeah. Unrelated, but I've covered this one, so I knew it. Because it's like yeah. electronic drums and acoustic, and they come together, and yeah. it's so sick. But uh, what a good song. It's just a strong 80s hit song. You were a formidable opponent. Um, you great, too. Great Congratulations. Yeah. I mean, you guys tied. That's fantastic. Yeah. It, se it seems like you go prior to 1990, and I was pretty on it, and anything after Dave was like... Yeah. Well, I feel like we've accomplished our goal here because I right. did give away a prize either way. So we've accomplished that. So okay. That's they say, good yeah, news. Dylan, do a flip there. <laughs> and, yeah, there, there it is. And everybody else out there in the chats, both chats, keep bringing your favorites, your favorite drum hooks, what you think is a drum hook. We're going to keep talking about that just and as we go try and find here. new drum hooks. It's yeah. getting rarer. So. I think that should be the goal by the end of this episode because we only got another 20 minutes left, mm. 10, 15 maybe. So if you can think of a drum hook that's from 2010 and beyond, and beyond, I mean, to now. <laughs> get, get, that's that's a tough one. Yeah, you should. If Jack can, you should pull up uh, "Shake It Off" at some point. No, I guess that's it. That's that worth one. listening yeah. to. That's a really impressive drum hook. Yeah. It is. I would agree with that. I wouldn't mind Taylor Swift playing us out. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, it is time now for Groove of the Week. This Groove of the Week is by Tenny Clementine. Let's see it, and we're going to talk about it after we check out this amazing drummer. So gosh. musical. She's got pop chops. She totally. Does. Holy. Totally. That's Black Pink or whatever that's Yeah, that's right. She yeah. should be playing with them. That's badass. No kidding. Where did you find who found that clip? Was I it? found that one actually. Just no I was way. on Instagram the other day and uh, I was just doing the old uh, Instagram surfy surf. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I was checking out some drummers and another one of her videos actually came up and I just went down a bit of a rabbit hole on her page and holy cow. Some really great stuff. Uh, she does a lot of gospel playing uh, in church. I believe she's Indonesian. Pretty, Pretty sure. sure. Do you remember the name? Uh, yeah, so Tenny Clementine. So uh, those of you watching right now, that's T-E-N-N-Y-C-L-E-M-E-N-S-T-I-N-E. -E -E. We'll add that as a graphic later as well. But Tenny Clementine on Instagram. Some really, really cool drumming. Got awesome her. stuff. Yeah. Wicked. That was so good. That was really cool. And even the groove when she came into the, yeah. the hook. Down, now, 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 now. She's just That's right exactly there it. with it. When she comes in, she's like just as confident with all the chops as with like leaving that space. Yeah. You should reach out to her and give her a, um, an honorary membership because that, that, is, that was some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And go and follow her. If you guys are watching this, You'll see right here, right below, probably right around there. You'll see her somewhere tag, around there. Somewhere, yep. somewhere yep. come up. And uh, uh, yeah, if you have any drummers out there that you want to have showcased during Groove of the Week, let us know. Contact me at krad at drumeo.com. I love getting your submissions. We share them all the time. Uh, but we're always looking for drummers that just haven't been seen yet. You want to know a cool story mm -hmm. with? Don't send me uh, videos of Dave. <laughs> Don't send me videos of Jared or Brandon. We have those. <laughs> They're already famous. There's too many of them out there already. Yeah. Um, what were you going to say? Cool story. The one we did last week or two weeks ago, the uh, Groove of the Week. That was one of Dorothea Taylor's students. The guy playing Panama with you're his band. You're kidding me. Yeah, oh she, my goodness. She messaged me. She's like, that's my student. He's so excited. Oh. She taught him. You're kidding. That, yeah, explains, I know that. that explains the hands. Yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, he just randomly popped up on my TikTok and I just, I saved that video and I've, I've gone back to it so many times. I didn't know that that was So shout student. out to Dorothea Taylor that's coaching amazing. the next generation. <laughs> that's, yeah. Just, that's right? Amazing. It's a small drumming world. Yeah. That's why I love this stuff. It's so cool. Oh my so goodness. So cool. All right, now it's time for Student of the Week. Every week we like to celebrate one of our Drumeo members. They work super hard to play the drums and they love sharing their accomplishments with us. Let's see this week's uh, Student of the Week. I'm like, Drummer of the Week? That's wrong. Drum Sticks, check it out. Don't you cry no more.
so cool. What a great song. That's a hard <sighs> song, too. So many change-ups in there. Sounded great, though. And I don't know if you noticed, he had the sheet music on, yeah. on his big screen. And he was playing with the drumless version of you that, know, that you only get through drumming. You just drum stole all the things I was going to say. Sorry, Kyle. That's okay. You did a great job Sorry. of it. <laughs> I'll come you know, back to it. Fantastic. His Great. name was Drumsticks. Drumsticks, but he goes by like sticks like the band sticks, which confused me that he played a Kansas song. But <laughs> uh, he, I, I got to tell a little bit of, about his story because it's amazing. He's only been drumming for a few months, guys. Serious? Yeah. Does yep. he have any musical background? Yes, oh, has a okay. mus musical background. He, he played a bunch of instruments. He started piano lessons, went to trumpet, sang in choir, all that cool stuff. A few months back, though, he his drumming journey began because, well, kind of because it had to. His church needed a drummer. Oh. And he's like, you know what? I really want to play the drums. I'm going to go get a drum set. We're going to figure this out. Yeah. Well, he had to play for one week. One week became six. And off he went. Eventually found himself drumming. did 30-day drummer a few months back. No and submitted for his first student focus review recently. And uh, there we go. He's learning friggin' uh, Kansas songs. That's going back and forth between Straight and Swung, just like that. Good for you. That's you know, amazing. You put, you put in the work. You have the right people around you, the community around you. Um, and then Drumio hopefully helped you out. Sounded like it did, you know. So look at you now. You're playing every Sunday. That's not an easy song to play either. And I don't know if you're reading the notation. If you are, congrats. But I guess it comes a little easier if you have piano background. Uh, sheet music is foreign to a lot of drummers. Well, what's cool is 30 Day Drummer does not teach reading even. So he got all his groove right. from that. And right. then he probably had the theory background already. Yeah. But... Honestly, 30 Day Drummer is so good. Like, if you're watching, we'll open it again later in the year, most likely, but to just start playing songs like that and get drumming, it works. Mm -hmm. It's well, way I mean, more fun. It just mm -hmm. works. We've been doing lessons well, for, since 2003 when you really boil it down. I don't think we've come up with something that it gives you results faster than that ever in our entire mm -hmm. time of, of doing it. Just from the response and the feedback we've gotten, right? Yeah. It's crazy. So yeah, definitely check it out. And we have 30 Day Chops going on right now too, which is like the same idea, but for developing chops, more for the intermediate, I'd say. Um, and that's actually, I think it started this week, didn't today. it? Today. Starts today. Starts today. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, cool. You, now, the thing is, of course, I'm going to try and segue this all to work. Unfortunately, we've closed that cohort for 30 Day Chops. You could join today. But if you wanted to join it, all you have to do is become a member of Drumio, and then you'll get access to it. We just give it to you. That'll happen. So how do you do that? Well, maybe before you even join, you want to check us out. You could be like drummer, Drumsticks and just come out and use the sheet music, learn some songs, have some fun. All you got to do is go to our seven-day trial because you know what? It's free. Yeah. Perfect, Jack. You couldn't have done that any better. Uh, yeah, seven-day trial for free. Drumio.com slash trial. There cool beans, go. man. <sighs> now let's give some stuff away. Nope. No, let's not let's not give stuff away. It's time to talk about gear. Ah. Oh. So, uh, did you get a chance to try this at all? I did not. Okay, that's all right. So, uh, what we're going to do instead is I'm going to hand this to you, and you're going to check it out while I talk about it. That sounds excellent. Dave actually took it for a fair spin earlier. So, yeah. this is a bass drum beater by a company called Dynamic Beaters. This is a flex beater. So, what does it do, Dylan? Uh, it looks like it has a built-in gasket of some sort. Yeah. And yeah, it flexes, I guess, upon impact. Yeah. So that's a big change to your technique. Yeah. It Why basically, do they do this? The idea is that 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 transfer of of vibration and energy isn't like being forced back into your foot and your leg when you're playing really hard. Huh. Uh, a lot of drummers don't like that feel where you've got that that impact back. Uh, so this sort of helps cushion that blow a little bit. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier on your on your body, and uh, you know. For a bunch of other reasons, it, it's an interesting and innovative way to make a bass drum beater because I think a lot of times we just assume a bass drum beater is just a thing that you put on the pedal and you go. Right? Yeah. Well, but I mean, they said it? no. Dynamic beaters <laughs> said no. We're going to make something that's going to have a bit more of an advantage with that flexibility. And you guys have tried it. Sh yeah. Shane Jones in the chat says, does it taste good? <laughs> yeah, it so, does look like some. Yeah. Uh, it is bass drum pedal or bass drum beater flavored, unfortunately. Oh, it's not, no. It's not bubblegum. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so, yeah. So, with that, that Dave, impact in mind, yeah, go ahead. Um, so, Dave, you tried it. I did. What'd you think? 
You know, at first you said just try the pedal. I didn't know what was what was different about it because right. I didn't look. Um, it, it definitely has a different feel to it. And when I was pressing, I, I, you might know of me as a heavy player. So when I play, I dig into the bass drum, and I felt like I wasn't able to dig in as much as I wanted to. But that not it wasn't in a bad way either. Right. Um, I also felt for some reason, and it may make sense just because of the physics of it, but I felt I was able to have more control over my lighter notes, my ghost notes, I guess you could say, or my setup notes. Um, and then I went back to the straight regular beater and I don't know, this one had a nice little sponge to it. I actually liked it. And it's actually really hard for me to get into something for the sake of something different. Like I've played so many different beaters in the past and I just really like the straight beater with the foam or the, um, uh, whatever kind of fabric this is felt, um, beater. I used uh, just nothing but that, but yeah, I actually was impressed with that. If it's a product that gives Dave some dynamics in his playing, it should be... We're all for Dylan, it. We're thousands, 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 all thousands of thousands of dollars. Okay, you guys so are just the worst. I'm going to show an action just a little bit here. If you want to cut to the foot cam there for me, Jack. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, I'm going to move that beater out of the way. Yeah, there, there we go. go. So, you can see, look at that. Yeah. It does flex a little bit. And definitely, like you said, Dave, if I'm playing quieter notes, I do feel the impact kind right? of release more, right? Hmm. Now, I've been playing for 30 some odd years, pretty familiar with how a standard bass drum beater feels. So it, there is definitely a difference there. And like you said, it, it, it because it does flex, even at that initial bit, it does sort of give you a bit more of a dynamic range zone, if you will, because you can feel it sort of giving back a little bit. You can kind of push a little more into it and, and get a little more feedback from the beater instead of it just being like a, a straight impact. Um, it's subtle though, I will say that. I yeah. found it very subtle. They have two different versions of it with different types of flex and I think one thing they're weighted different as well. It's very well made using a carbon steel shaft so it's never gonna break, I don't think. Um, and it doesn't well, really I have a... I was concerned that after, like I was telling you before, ten thousand strokes or more on that, will it start? Will it start becoming a little bit more flexible on that? Break because, it in, because right now, yeah. right now, I like how it's fair. Ten, you know, I like how tense it is right now. That's that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. And, and and just so you know, it works. There's no like address side to it. It's, it's like three sixty. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think that's probably a good thing because otherwise you'd be dealing with probably a pinned yeah, hinge or something, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this sells for. About fifty-nine dollars US, so it's not. Ooh. Well, it's not <laughs> goodness. It's not a cheap solution. I dropped Six, it, but it's uh, it's durable. Sixty dollars US, so that's about eighty Canadian. I'd yep, say. that's right. Yeah, seventy-nine ninety-nine. Okay. But um, how much is this a regular? I, I, I'm generally a skeptic of things that improve upon what works, but I am curious about that. It seems yeah. interesting. I was telling you when you showed me uh, last week. I play a huge bass drum, like a 26 I love to practice on, and I feel like the combination of all the give in that head mm -hmm. plus that would probably be too much. Right. But yep. maybe on a 20 or 22, it might be a cool option. That's exactly right. And I think, you know, it's very well made. It's um, one of those things that if you find you maybe get a lot of shock in your foot, maybe your, your technique is such that you maybe think you could benefit from this, because they make drumsticks that have a similar kind of a shock absorption design in them as well. Uh, there's those dead blow drumsticks that have the rubber uh, inserted inside the, the back end of the stick. Hmm. That works quite well. And this is sort of a, a variant on that for uh, your feet, which is pretty cool. Yeah, but I've never had that problem, right? That's I, the question, I, yeah, is yes. do we need it? Do we need it? Right? right? But again, Maybe we don't need it, but maybe someone out there is going to get benefit from it. That's the way I look at it. So do I think it's for everybody? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But I love innovation. I love trying this stuff because for every, you know, few things that you try that, that maybe are on the outskirts of being that next thing that we all need, you do find things. And maybe this is going to be something we need one day. Maybe there's another step towards this. I don't know. I right? just love those mechanically inclined people. That'll be yeah. playing the drums. They'll be like, "There's a better way to do this," and then they have the skills to just make something new. Well, you I don't wonder, have that. You wonder why? Like, there's so much innovation around the world, but very little innovation in musical instruments. I I find at least comparatively, and I don't yeah. I, I don't know how many engineers are are musicians, but if they were to sit down and learn an instrument, I'm sure there'd be a lot more innovation going on around Maybe. the drums. True that. Guitar, you know. All right, yeah. so uh, yeah, overall verdict, I think it's a really well-made product. I think it's super cool. I think it's a subtle difference for myself, but I think there are people out there that would find great benefit from this. 
Uh, yeah, so we'll be auctioning it off. No, that's right. Kidding. Well done. <laughs> Starting uh, bid. If you want to check them out, uh, it's Dynamic Beaters is where you would find this. Cool. Dynamicbeaters.com. So are we giving this away to a member? We are giving this away to one of our members right now. Okay. Mm. Dave, give me a number between one and two. Uh, one. One. I should have known. <laughs> uh, we're going to give this away to Mega Blue, which has a three in their name, in the members area. Okay. So it's M3 Congratulations. Ga Blue. Mega Blue, you've won this awesome bass drum beater. Email me at krad at drumio.com with your mailing address. We're going to send this out to you, and then you can let us know what you think of it. Yeah. All right? Nice thing about that is that'll work on an electric kit or acoustic kit. It'll work on anything. It might be really cool on an electronic kit. When That's they, fair. When they don't have much give on the strike pad. That's a good point. Hmm. You know, that actually might, or even, I wonder if we can partner with them. Probably would need, uh, yeah, but to do one for the quiet kick beater because that's a pretty hard surface, right? Yeah. To get something with a little flex. But yeah, it's a good point on those black pad bass drum, um, electronic bass drum pads. Yeah, you'd want a little bit of flex. Yeah. Right. Totally. Didn't even think about that. Yeah. Sorry, while you were demoing it, mm -hmm. if they can cut to Kyle close up here, I was looking at your shirt. And if, if you were sitting in that picture wearing the same shirt, it would just be Inception. Oh, it's true. Yeah, because you're goodness. in the room. <laughs> it just looks Jeez. so funny on the monitor. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> in case you're wondering, yes, clearly this is, uh, it's actually Brandon's drum set. Well, it's actually a variant of Brandon's drum set, but it you're is. You're a huge fan of his, eh? Brandon's, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is from our merch drop that we did recently. You shouldn't have let him go off the show. <laughs> <laughs> this is him. This is all he gets. It's not the same when you meet your heroes. <laughs> no, it's not the same. Never meet your heroes. Oh, that's so, so true. That's so, so true. true. Uh, cool. All right, we're going to give away a one-year's membership to someone on YouTube, to Dromeo, so you can come hang out with us. Take 30-day chops. Maybe you want to learn your favorite songs. We have over 5,000 with and without drums and with full transcriptions. Yeah. What more could you need? Oh, other lessons? We got that too. Yes. We have tons. Just check out the shows we got too. We were just talking with Todd Sigerman. He's got a great show called Spotlight mm -hmm. where he just talks about his favorite drummers, the most impactful drummers that he feels of, of his generation. Um, and yeah, it's a really cool show. So we got lots of stuff inside. Dylan, I need a number between one and 12,000. Oh, what does that even mean? 333. Oh, I should have known. Oh. All right. Patrick Cavanaugh with a K, you have won a one-year membership to Drumio. You are the 330th person that I found in the chat. Uh, email me at krad at drumio.com with your information, and we will get you set up for a year, and you can come hang out with us, and we'll teach you all kinds of cool stuff. But not just us. Chad Smith and Larnell Lewis and goodness who, who knows who else. We'll teach you how to write your own drum hooks. I so, always say... Drumio is the place where you get lessons from the world's best drummers and Jared Falk, too. Oh. <laughs> He's not even here. He's not even here. I'm so, sorry, Jared. Uh, people always ask where Jared is, and I always feel responsible to like, oh, he's still here. He's in Italy. He's actually in Italy. He yeah. was invited by he's that, at a piano company that makes Timbro He's out there uh, working with Proel and Dexabel. Yeah, yeah so mm -hmm. such a cool trip. Uh, yeah. Hopefully he has some pictures or something we can share with you. Yeah, I hope so. All right, everybody. That's it for this week. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, I can't wait for next week's episode. Next week's episode, we're going to see how versatile the Pretty Shuffle actually is. Oh, play it mm -hmm. on everything? Oh, yeah. Damn. We're going to see where we can take it and maybe Boom. where it doesn't belong. Maybe we shove the Pretty Shuffle where it doesn't go. I don't know. We'll see. Love it. Cool. Thank you Love all for it. joining. Those of you in the members area will come right back. We're going to answer your questions. Otherwise, we'll see you all again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks.